Yo, what is up, everybody? I'm Joe Shoes, and today we're here doing a nice little live stream, a little social dinnering, if you will, but we are not having your traditional dinner. We are going to do a little breakfast for dinner. If you know me, you know I just love the breakfast foods, so I will be here trying out something a little bit new, something that apparently is very hard to find. It took me a while to find it. I did get it, and so I will be trying it out today. I'm talking about a seasonal holiday cereal, Monster Mash, all of the Monster cereals mixed together, right? Every year we look forward to Monster Cereal. A couple of years ago, they brought back Fruit Brute and Yummy Mummy. Today, they mixed them all together. So we've got our Booberry. We've got our Count Chocula. Frankenberry, Fruit Brute, Yummy Mummy, 50 years of monster cereal. And that's something to celebrate. And we will be celebrating today by trying this out. Before we get started, please remember to hit that follow button. That also always helps out. Remember to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Joe Shoes. Subscribe to my YouTube, youtube.com slash Joe Shoes. And, uh, and check out my podcast. My podcast every week, the Car Jomez podcast, is available anywhere you get podcasts. Uh, just download it, subscribe. And remember, if you do subscribe, send a screenshot to at Car Jomez with the hashtag belly button splash, and I will send you an 8x10. I'll even autograph it for you because I am that good of a guy. So we've got this cereal. We want to try it out. It's going to be really good, I'm sure, because, I mean, honestly, we kind of know what we're getting into, right? We've all had monster cereal before. We're not new to the party. So I've got my trusty bowl and my trusty spoon. We're going to crack open a fresh a box here. I see a lot of people on social media hitting me up. Where did you find this? Honestly, it was just at Walmart in an end cap display. It's not like I did some real deal hunting for it. All right. We're going to take a closer look at this in a minute. Let's just pour this out. Now we've got our artificially berry flavored frosted cereals with monster marshmallows. Let's see how it looks all mixed together. You see it right there. I don't really see a lot of Count Chocula in here. It looks like the cereal pieces really are just Frankenberry and Blueberry. That's a little bit disappointing, right? That just looks like Frankenberry and Blueberry to me. But it's the marshmallows where you see the difference. You've got your purple marshmallows, your yellows, your pinks. So I guess they are well represented within the box of cereal. Uh, like I said, you kind of feel know what you're, you kind of know what you're getting into, right? Like we've all had monster cereal. I got this big gallon of milk in case I need multiple bowls of this stuff. Please don't spill. All right. Pour it out. Sweet. So we have our freshly prepared bowl of cereal. Like I said to anyone just coming in, please remember to hit that follow button, subscribe, whatever it is that we call it here on Twitch. Also, if you don't already, check me out on social media everywhere at The Joe Shoes. And also... Lay, let's have it. Let's have a chat. Whatever you feel like talking about, get in the chat. Type it out to me. We can talk. We can tell about stories. I've got the Sunday night baseball game on, so I can watch my Mets get smoked again because that seems to be the way it's going. But until then, we're gonna dive into this cereal. So, like I said, all the cereal pieces look to be just blueberry and Frankenberry. And um, I mean, I guess that makes sense because. Four out of the five are berry something with yummy mummy and fruit brut. Count Chocula kind of would be at a place amongst the rest of these, but 
Count Chocula is my favorite. I'm a chocolate guy. I don't really like the fruit stuffs uh, as much. But let's see what we got here. Hmm. I mean, I'm a sucker for for any cereal with marshmallows anyway. Who doesn't love cereal marshmallows? They're, they're outstanding. Mm. Mm. Not really. There we go. Some uh, orange there. A little orange marshmallow in there. Um. Mm. Okay, first couple bites. Mm. Pretty much exactly what I was expecting. You know, like I said, Frankenberry, Booberry. Mm. Mm. It's fine. I mean, these cereals. Like I said, are not my favorite. I am partial to Count Chocula. But this is fine. It's okay. Mm. Mm. I mean, I'm happy to have it. Just because I'm a fan of any anything special. And the fact that they kind of hide the cereal away from you all year round until you get to Halloween season, it just makes you want it more. It's like how all you guys go nuts for pumpkin spice anything. Ah. Mm. 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 Marshmallows. I, I'm telling you, any cereal with marshmallows, though, is good. And this, it's not going to be my favorite. Mm -hmm. But it is going to be something I would pick up every year, because why not? Mmm. Mm. Mm. So if I was going to give this a grade, if I was going to give this a grade, I'd probably go triple main man. It's good. I'm happy I have it. I don't know that I'll necessarily be fiending for it. Aaron Ortiz, great question. Great question. What are my top five cereals? I feel like, like everyone else, like when you're a kid, you have like cereal every day, right? It's just a nice, easy breakfast for mom to put together for you before she sends you off to school. So I tend to think of myself as a cereal guy. Top five, in no particular order, I love Cookie Crisp. And Cookie Crisp is one that I will fiend for. I'll be walking through the supermarket. I'll say, I'll see it on the shelf, and I'll be like, oh, you know, I haven't had Cookie Crisp in a while, and it's about time I get some Cookie Crisp. I love Cookie Crisp. Next one, Oreo O's. I think Oreo O's are phenomenal. Mm. We're all out of this, so let's hang out. Let's have a second bowl, right? All right. Still got a little milk at the bottom there. 
to make a second bowl. So we got Oreo O's. We got Cookie Crisp. Next one for me, Fruity Pebbles. Ooh, Fruity Pebbles is so good. And I, I think I'll, it should be on everybody's list. Even though I said I'm not the biggest fruity flavored uh, fan, Fruity Pebbles is just absolutely delightful. Um, and this one's going to come off probably a little weird. I love, I love life. Life cereal, I think is so good. And they do that whole, like, I, I'm sure it's not healthy. I'm sure it's supposed to be a healthier version of a kid's cereal. But, yo, life cereal is delicious. Mm. Yo, honestly, just having this, because I don't eat a lot of cereal anymore, it's making me want to go and just buy everything. Uh, life cereal, so good. Mm. Now, number five, I mean, there's so many, right? Like, do I put a Captain Crunch in there? I love the peanut butter crunch. But if I'm going to – if Fruity Pebbles better than life. Is Fruity Pebbles better than life? Is Fruity Pebbles better than life? Is Fruity Pebbles better than life? Yes. Yes, it is. Fruity Pebbles is better than life. Uh, if you give me the choice, one or the other, put a gun to my head. But please don't do that because I don't want to die. Uh, I am old now, so I have very limited time left on this planet. I want to be here to enjoy all of the cereals. But if you made me choose, if you made me choose, yeah, Fruity Pebbles over life. Um, I do, uh, and then my number five is going to be, oh, here's my man Gomez. Uh, check us out. We do a podcast every week called the Car Gomez Podcast, available everywhere you get podcasts so you can download it subscribe to it i would like that if you did do that everywhere serial list i feel like serial lists change every time like every time i talk about it i think of something different like right now reese's peanut butter puffs reese's peanut butter puffs is so good because everything reese's touches is delicious it is wonderful stupendous i loves it it is the bee's knees my man Reese's peanut butter puff cereal, so good. Mm. Mm. Cinnamon life, not a fan, not a fan of cinnamon life, but cinnamon toast crunch. Sometimes I just get in a mood where I want cinnamon toast crunch. I'm like that. I have every right to be like that, where I just get into moods and want stuff. Mm. Mm. Yeah, as we keep going with this, like I said, it's fine. I wish it doesn't come off like the mix I thought it was. I don't know really what I was expecting. Mm. Mm. It's fine. Triple main man, three stars, right in the middle of the pack. Perfectly acceptable. Like I said, just mix of booberry and frankenberry. So if you're partial to one of those, they're on shelves right now, too. You could just go get one of them, and that'd be fine. Like me, I got a box of Count Chocula hiding that I can't wait to dig into. We may have to do another stream for that and just sit around and bullshit while I, while I eat a box of Count Chocula. See, not a fan of Reese, Reese's Pieces. This is Tommy Sapienza, a good dude. Big Shuni. I can get that. I can understand that. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is good. Sometimes I get that vibe. It's just not something I run to. But the Reese's Pieces I get because there needs to be 
a little bit of a more of a chocolate taste on Reese's Pieces. I like them. I think they're good. But Reese's Pieces were never my favorite candy. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, I would take those behind the middle school and get them pregnant. I love Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Reese's Pieces never felt the same. I did used to think that they were so much cooler after E.T. E.T. wants Reese's Pieces. Shoes wants Reese's Pieces. So, but the pieces don't hold up on their own as good. If you give me the choice of that similar kind of candy, I will take the M&Ms. Or if you listen to my podcast a couple weeks ago, Gomez brought up talking about Kissables. Kissables from Hershey's. You get that Hershey's chocolate inside the coated candy shell. And those chefs kiss. Mm. Let me tell you about this woman. She is the best. She used to send me pictures of all the things she used to bake and everything looked like a million bucks. And I miss those pictures because it was food porn. It was food porn in my SMS text messages, my iMessages. No, not iMessages, SMS. She comes up in green. But cinnamon toast crunch, cereal ice cream is wonderful. I would want that with every cereal. You ever have a like a, a Snickers ice cream pop, a Twix ice cream bar? That stuff is good. Why can't I have Lucky Charms? Why can't I have Cocoa Puffs? Don't make me choose, baby. Don't try to change me. Mm. See, I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't lie to you. I I am the teller of the truth. Twix ice cream is the best. So if you've never had a Twix ice cream bar, hit up your local 7-Eleven. It's always a, they always got them. For some reason, I feel like that's the only place you get them. I never see them in a supermarket. Maybe I'm just not looking. Because as you can tell by my wildly impressive physique, I don't put that kind of stuff in my body normally. I, you know, being Italian. I look as if I'm chiseled out of marble because that's how just we do things. We do everything in marble from our bathrooms to our babies. So we're just chilling, looking awesome. I think the Snickers is great too. Give me, give me one or the other. I probably go with the Twix, but the Snickers one, I ain't kicking out of bed. Mm. Who wants to have another bowl of this? Let's see if there's anything cool on the box. We didn't really investigate the box. I mean, just the artwork is fun. If you look at this like I look at toys when I get toys in the mail, the artwork is very important to me. What's eye-catching? If I was a kid and I saw this on a shelf, I would lose my mind. Like, look at all these monsters and they're hanging out and they're playing rock and roll. I bet like they're their own Josie and the Pussycats. This is going to be dynamic. You come on the back. And these guys are rocking the out. Who wouldn't want to rock with them? Look at Frankenberry there. Like just foot up on the tombstone, really getting into that. Let's see how many strings he got on that. Zero. Frankenberry don't need strings to hit the baseline, my man. That's why Frankenberry is killing it right here. Fruit boot on the skins, giving that big howl. And Count Chocula playing that organ out of a coffin? Out of a coffin! A coffin! That's where he has the ivories and he tickles them through the coffin. So good. Artwork, 100%. If you are a child walking through the supermarket with your parent and or guardian, how do you walk right past this and not like throw a, a fully blown hissy fit about wanting this in your cereal bowl come Saturday morning when the Smurfs come on. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Aaron Ortiz with another question. What do we got? Top five Saturday morning cartoons to eat cereal to. Well, Aaron Ortiz, I am of a certain age where I remember what it was like to have Saturday morning cartoons. Mm. The first one I always think of is the Smurfs. The Smurfs 
was a banger. I love the Smurfs because I thought Gargamel was in the right the whole time. Like the man just wanted to eat. And just like, listen, I understand people are vegan and they love their animals, but I'm a meat eater. And Gargamel is a Smurf eater. So I don't see anything wrong with Gargamel wanting to go eat the Smurfs. I'm sorry. And he looked like he took good care of that cat. So that's the one I always think of. But like the Snorks was kind of a big one for me, which was just the Smurfs, but underwater. But also there was, uh, I was a big fan of Don Coyote. I don't know if you remember Don Coyote. It was inspired by the novel Don Quixote. And this was a coyote who traveled on horseback with his apprentice, Sancho Panda, and they would, you know, fight windmills and stuff. So pretty good. And I just lost half my followers because I think I said it was okay for Gargamel to eat the Smurfs. Oh, my God. Let's have a little more of this. Still got some milk in this bowl we could reuse. Mm. Mm. The thing is, like, a lot of people get confused and think a lot of, like, after-school cartoons were Saturday morning cartoons when they really weren't. Like, He-Man, for instance, was not a Saturday morning cartoon. It was a post-school, like, come home from school and put on He-Man. Thundercats, same thing. A big cartoon for me was Ghostbusters. And not the real Ghostbusters, based on the movie. But Ghostbusters by Filmation. So Filmation, in the 70s, there was a live action show called Ghostbusters. And it was about these two guys who would bust ghosts and they had a monkey a, uh, a monkey as a partner. And in the cartoon, the cartoon was supposed to be basically a sequel of the live action show where you have Eddie and Jake and they, they're they actually the kids of the original Ghostbusters, but they're still teaming up with their dad's pet monkey, Tracy. And they go and they go on animated adventures to kill ghosts uh, and combat the forces of prime evil. Filmation is also the company that put out he-Man and the Masters of the Universe, so a lot of the voices are the same. So Skeletor is actually the voice of Primeval. It's dynamite. I love that cartoon. It was on Netflix streaming for, like, a while when they were first getting their streaming together and, like, really building it out. Netflix had so much weird stuff on, uh, on there in the early days of streaming. Mm. You know what? I can show you. Where is it? So this is what I'm talking about. Filmation Ghostbusters. And they would travel around and do some ghost stuff. See, that's them getting chased by Prime Evil at the bottom there. Pretty fun. Pretty fun stuff. Mm. Um, I also remember when um when Super Mario got a cartoon, like that was a big deal for me. I mean, who didn't love Super Mario, especially if you're in my age demographic? That was like the first video game, and everybody played it. You'd go to school, everybody could talk about it. Super Mario was very much a shared experience. Mm. Mm. Then I had other ones that maybe were Saturday morning cartoons, but my memories of them are watching them early in the morning having cereal before I went to school. So stuff like that was 
See, the Captain Lou Albano, this is a common misconception too. Captain Lou Albano as Mario is actually from the Super Mario Brothers Super Show that had live action interludes in between a little cartoon. And then on Fridays, you'd get a Legend of Zelda cartoon. That was like the special occasion. But it wasn't a Saturday morning cartoon. It was an after school show. So that was done in syndication, meaning that they would do like 65 episodes and you get like two seasons out of it or one season if it just lasted like the 60 episodes. But a regular Saturday morning cartoon was really like one season of it would be like 13 episodes. So you have a lot of like shows from the era that are based on intellectual properties of the time, like uh, famous movies and stuff, RoboCop. Uh, Chuck Norris and the Karate Commandos, Rambo and um, The Force of Freedom, it was called. And it, go on YouTube right now and just look up Rambo Force of Freedom intro. It is the most like dictionary definition of 80s steroids intensity. And if that doesn't make you want to run through a brick wall, I don't know what will. Hmm. Mm. But some of the shows I used to watch in the morning before school, one of the big ones I remember is James Bond Jr. I felt like that was always on at the time. James Bond Jr. and Sonic the Hedgehog were like my two. And Camp Candy, the John Candy show. I love John Candy. So Camp Candy was like a big deal to me. But James Bond Jr. was so good. And no one can stop him because scum always tries. Young Bond, ba 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 he learned the game from his uncle, James. Now he's heir to the name, James Bond Bond. James Bond Jr. Mm. Mm. You're damn right. You're damn right. John Candy. What? Well, not in the time. He wasn't underrated. But... We kind of forget about him now. And and he was the man. John Candy is an absolute legend. Uncle Buck, great outdoors, planes, trains, and automobiles. So uh, space balls. Mm. His little role in Home Alone where he's Gus Polinsky, the Polka King. So good. Mmm. There you go. I, John Candy, legitimately, when I think of the people who shaped the way I look at comedy and what I think is funny, John Candy is always right there. John Candy, Chris Farley, Chevy Chase especially. Chevy Chase is a very big one for me, even though I know he's an asshole now. And everybody that's ever worked with him hates him. I get it. A lot of people hate me, so I'm okay with that. Um, but that's what I grew up on. So those are the things that, that I think are funny. That style, that delivery. And we just lost Norm McDonald this week, which is horribly sad. Nor I grew up watching him on Weekend Update. Everything, I, his delivery is just... It's not even so much what he said. It was how he said it. <laughs> like everything, he had the way of making the most like trite little words come off. Just absolutely hysterical. You know, and if he was, I, I think people, if you haven't already, or if you've never seen it, go check out the movie Dirty Work with him and Artie Lang. It is it's so good. And it, it's a movie. I feel like no one, people are talking about it this week because of his passing, but dirty work is such a good comedy. And I think Gomez, if you're still here watching, we should probably watch dirty work for an upcoming episode of the podcast, just because I want to have an excuse to watch dirty work. Not that I need it, but that'd be pretty cool. I saw a cool mashup shirt of John Candy as the... See, that's pretty good. 
that's pretty good. I would, I would wear that. I'm actually going to go look for that. He, I, I think the, <laughs> I think the lakes are so stuck up. Like relax, lakes. Like it's perfect. It is absolutely perfect. I, every, the clip that's been making it a, a, around lately is the um, him on Conan O'Brien, where they're promoting. Um, it's Courtney Thorne Smith, who I know from Melrose Place, and she was in like Revenge of the Nerds Part Two or something. But, um, she's promoting Chairman of the Board. She's in the movie Chairman of the Board with Carrot Top, and Norm just keeps making these stupid comments, like, and it's obviously irking her. But he's just shitting on the movie, and it is so stupendous. It's so good, and like something so simple. He's just like Chairman of the Board. I bet that's spelled. B-O-R-E-D. And like everyone just loses their mind. It is phenomenal for such a simple, easy joke. It is so good. BK Lax, what's up, my man? BK Lax, I know from my man Dylan Postel Hornswoggle's chat when he does his uh hot take uh hot take Tuesdays, I think we're on now. He's moved it around a couple times and Based on my work schedule, I can't get in every week. So, but that's how I know BK Lax. Thanks for coming in. You guys, if you're not already, please make sure to hit the follow button. Remember to follow me on social media at the Joe Shoes. And if you have a second, subscribe to the Car Jomez podcast. Comes out every Thursday. It is, uh, we're doing very well with that, actually. I'm having a lot of fun and I like seeing numbers go up. So please continue to subscribe to that. That way I can get really famous and sit in a pool and splash water out of my belly button all day because that's really all I want to do with the rest of my life. Mm. You watch it on Friday. See, like I said, we don't need an excuse to watch Dirty Work. Dirty Work's a great movie. And it's probably one of Chris Farley's like best uncredited roles where he's just yelling about the, and I've got my nose bit off by a Saigon whore. Mm. And then uh, I know I was supposed to do a, uh, if Dylan hit a certain number of subscribers, I was going to do a hot tub stream with him. I think they banned hot tub streams, though. I don't know if they did it on bathtubs, though. So maybe one day I'll put out some candles, read you guys a bedtime story or something while eating whatever cereal I find next. Mm. So back to the original point. John Candy's the man. Put some clout on his name. Mm. funny John Candy story, and he's not even really in it. Super Bowl 23, the 49ers are playing the Cincinnati Bengals. The 49ers are down late in the fourth quarter. They've got one chance to get down the field and get in the end zone to win the game. Everybody's nervous. Biggest game of the season, probably biggest game of their careers for, you know, 99% of the people on the field. So everybody's a little extra tight, little, little shook. Joe Montana, Hall of Fame quarterback, walks into the huddle. And knows he needs to loosen up the uh, feelings, needs to bring some levity to the moment. And he looks at the guys and goes, hey, guys, did you see John Candy sitting over there in the third row? How awesome is that? Everybody laughed. They went down the field, and he ends up throwing a touchdown pass to John Taylor to win the game. 49ers win Super Bowl twenty three. So that's a little John Candy tidbit. I don't know why I know that, but I do. So now you do. And knowing is half the battle. Mm. So a lot of people were asking me where I found this cereal. Honestly, I wasn't even like, don't get me wrong. I always take a look to see what's around. If anything's hiding displayed this time, I was just food shopping and there was a whole end cap display of family sized monster mash, a whole display. You couldn't miss it. So it was at the uh, Walmart neighborhood grocery, not the regular Walmart Supercenter. 
It was at the neighborhood grocery. I have been seeing people saying they are finding it at Publix if you are in the Southeast region. Although I've been seeing people in the Northeast who have had it for like weeks and months, even it feels like if you follow Dinosaur Dracula, big pop culture guy, I feel like he's had it for got to be a month and a half now. Um, the first time I saw it, found it, picked it up. If you're looking, hopefully as we get closer to Halloween, it should be coming. I, I would think it would be more uh, visible, more uh, get rid of those di 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 distribution problems. Mm. Mm. My problem with cereal, though, too, is I can't stop eating it until I'm completely out of milk. And sure, sure, I might have altered the game by adding milk a couple times, but like now I've got a pretty decent amount of milk in here, and I'm going to have to keep putting more cereal. Hmm. I don't remember a Shack cereal. Is this something new? Something borrowed? Something blue? Is this like in stores now? Shack cereal? I mean, it wouldn't shock me if Shack had a cereal back in like 92 or 93 because Shack had everything back in 92 or 93. Shaq has Papa John's pizza now. A regular ass pepperoni pizza. I have a review on my YouTube. Go check it out if you'd like. YouTube.com slash Joe Shoes. If you're Papa John's, if you're Papa John's, Frosted Flakes with Cinnamon Basketballs. No, I, I haven't had that. Uh, is it new? Is it old? Is it... Is this something I can find now? Um, here's, here's the thing. I love Shaq. But if you're going to do something with... If you're going to do something with and put Shaq on it, like you're Papa John's, right? You are Papa John's, and you have to get the stench of racism off your brand. So you bring in Shaq, because who doesn't love Shaq? right? He's the man. Now you're going to say, hey, we're going to have this Shaq pizza. It's going to be dynamite. Shaq pizza. And it's just a pepperoni pizza? Are you, are you kidding me? That That's what you're going to... You're going to put Shaq's... You're going to waste Shaq's name on a regular pepperoni pizza? What, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Shaq had a soda too, like actual Shaq branded soda. Because when I think of Shaq soda, I think of Pepsi Big Slam. You know, it was like a liter, a big liter. And like all the 14 year olds in the world wanted to walk around with diabetes in a bottle because we all wanted to be like Shaq and just chug a Big Slam in between games at the pickup basketball court. Mm. BK Lax just saw the Shaq cereal. Gomez is still saying he sees it on the shelves, but that it's not very good. I don't know. Shaq, you're letting me down, man. Like, and honestly, if you're Shaq, wouldn't you wake up in the morning and just be like, wouldn't I just want to make shoes proud of me today? Like, just wake up in the morning and every day. He should just want to make me proud. I think, like, my opinion is the one that should matter most to him. Apparently not. And I think that's a bad marketing strategy. Because I am the target demo for anything Shaq. Mm. I was in 7 of Cream... You know what? Tommy Sapienza, I have never seen this, but I'm actually going to go take a look for it now. 
Robzilla join in. How's the monster mash? Robzilla, I'll give you a quick brief update. Mm. Number one, the cereal portion of it is just blueberry and frankenberry pieces. Okay, fine. So we're keeping that berry stuff. We're not really putting the chocolate, Count Chocula mix in there with the rest of it. The marshmallows all, are all in there. It's perfectly fine. It's acceptable. I gave it a triple main man, three stars out of five. Middle of the pack. I don't hate it by any means. It's fine. I like it. I'll have it again next year because of the novelty. But that's where it's at. I, it's not something I'm going to go um, do backflips over or be like, oh, my God, I can't wait till Monster Mash comes out again next year. No, no, it's not worth that. But I think everyone should try it. Because with silly seasonal stuff like this, if you want it back, you got to support it. You got to support everything you like. And honestly, just the box alone is so cool. The artwork on the box is awesome. Monster cereal history on the side for 50 years of monster cereal. Look, let's start this. So 50 years puts us back to... 1971. Now, 1971 to me doesn't seem like 50 years ago, but that's how old we've all gotten. But 1971, Count Chocula and Frankenberry step onto the scene. 1972, Booberry turns the monster duo into a trio. 1974. Fruit Brute joins the group. And now we have nothing until 1988 when Yummy Mummy rounds out the lineup. And then 2021 for 50 years, we get Monster Mash bringing them all together. I'm going to put some more in this bowl here because I still got milk that needs to be mixed with some cereal. <coughs> You know what? Um, hold on one second, BK Lax. Uh, special edition for the 50th anniversary. It does say that on the box, right on Fruit Brute's drums, 50 years of monster cereals. At this point, um, if it does well enough, why wouldn't you bring it back next year? You know, if you're only doing these things seasonally anyway, maybe you're right. You know, I, I don't have any inside knowledge um, either way. But at this point, it's harmless. At that, you're just talking about shelf space at that point. Mm. This is actually a conversation we had earlier in the stream. I brought up Oreo O's, Life, uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Puffs, Fruity Pebbles, and Cookie Crisp. Cookie Crisp my all-time favorite. Mm. What about you guys in the chat? What do... What do you like? What is your all-time favorite? Just give me one. Or if you can't pick one, what's on top of your mind? When you think favorite cereals, what comes to your head? Mm. Lucky Charms, okay. Okay. I always liked Lucky Charms because it was a marshmallow cereal. But for some reason, never one of my favorites. If if I got it, my mom brought it home. Yes, absolutely. But unless they had, they would, you would see the commercials. Unless they had a commercial with like a new marshmallow being inserted in the box. And I was like, oh my goodness, I have to have Lucky Charms with that new marshmallow medallion, whatever it was. For whatever reason, I would always mark out and need that. Gomez says, Fruity Pebbles or Frosted Flakes? Frosted Flakes are good. I love Fruity Pebbles. Frosted Flakes was another one. Um, yeah, it's good. I like it. BK Lax, I don't know my full top five, but Pops and Honey Smacks. And then Gomez also says, Smacks used to be good. Yeah, they didn't they change the formula on the Honey Smacks? Uh, corn pops are, corn pops are one of those that 
it wasn't my favorite, but I felt like we didn't get it a lot when I had, um, when I was a kid, like it just, we never had it a lot. So whenever I did get corn pops, it felt like, like a, an occasion. It'd be like, Oh my God, we got corn pops. My, I don't know if it was like one of those things where it just never went on sale. So my mom never bought it. I don't know. But like, whenever I did have it, like I said, it, it felt like an occasion. Hmm. Mmm. French toast crunch. I did like that one. That was a good one. Peanut butter cap and crunch. See, peanut butter cap and crunch is something I like. Probably my favorite of the Captain Crunch. But the problem is, it's not even my favorite peanut butter cereal because I love Reese's peanut butter puffs because then you got your chocolate puffs with your peanut butter puffs and you have a lot of action going on right in here all up and around your mouth and that's where the action needs to be mm. 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 Once again, thank you guys for coming in today. I really do appreciate it. Remember to follow me on here if you haven't already. Remember to follow me on social media at the Joe Shoes. And if you see that handy dandy news ticker on the bottom, check out my podcast. My double main man Gomez and I have a weekly pop culture, whatever is happening podcast called the Car Gomez Podcast, available wherever. You get your podcast. Please remember to subscribe. Leave a five-star review wherever you do download it. Uh, It's a lot of fun for me to do. We keep seeing new people jump on every week, which is very cool, very fun for me. I love the engagement of it. Mm. Honeycomb was a good one, too. Honeycomb I liked a lot. It was another one where we didn't have it in my house a lot. So whenever I got honeycomb, honeycomb, babe, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy Peck, thank you for coming in, Billy Peck. You're late. How many bowls in are we? I don't know. I lost count. Probably five. Five bowls? Five sounds about right, right? I want to say we're about five bowls in right now, getting ready to wind it down. It's been about almost 50 minutes so far. I'm very appreciative of anyone that came in. Part of me didn't think anyone would come in at all. We always have pebbles were always in the house a lot in my house. I I don't know. Once again, I would I got to ask my mom, like what her thought process was when she was shopping for us as kids. And I don't know if it was like a Flintstone thing. Like my brother and I both love the Flintstones. So I don't know if that was just like an easy out. Like, oh, we'll buy the kids Pebble cereals. They love the Flintstones and they love the cereal. Like, great. Two two birds, one stone type of thing. I don't know. It could be. I don't have kids. So I don't understand the mindset. And at some point, it's been so long since I myself was a kid that I almost don't think I remember what it was like to be a kid. Because... It's a long time ago, and I've been hitting the head a lot. Mm. Billy Peck, what a, what a guy. What a guy, Billy Peck. Thank you very much. Billy, check out Billy on the, on the interwebs everywhere at Zombilly Horror. He's got his fingers in a lot of things. Billy Peck. Most people here probably know him from the Major World Order podcast, but he's doing a podcast about Zubilee Zoo right now. I know my man Gomez is here right now. Gomez is a big Zubilee Zoo fan. Billy Peck is doing this podcast once a week. I believe they're just watching episodes of Zubilee Zoo and doing commentary of each episode with an original cast member of Zubilee Zoo. So, yeah, like... Go go check out, go follow Billy Peck at Zom Billy Horror. That way you could get in, get in uh everything he's into. You could follow along with that. Billy Peck's got his fingers in a lot of different things. 
Yeah, see, Gomez is excited. Gomez be loving that Zubali Zoo. Oh, man. All right, we're about ready to wrap it up here, and there's only one way that I've ever known of to close out a bowl of cereal, and it's by doing this. Mmm. Mmm. Berry. It tastes like strawberry. Uh, strawberry milk going down. Oh. Mmm. We are all done. That was about half the box, the family size box. We discussed what happened during it and what went into it at Zubali Zoo Pod. So. For those, uh, not that there are so many people here watching this, but check out the Zoobly Zoo podcast because, I mean, that's that's just dynamite. <laughs> um, with that being said, guys, thank you for coming in. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for following wherever it is that you do follow me. I very much appreciate it. I get so much support from the internet community right now. It's, uh, it's actually, um, sometimes it's... it's it's hard to believe. Um, it's uh, if you guys saw the uh, live nine vlog from the Major Wrestling Figure podcast, and like I got a pin now, like it's awesome, something I like never thought would happen. But uh, all you guys follow me on Twitter and Instagram, supporting my podcast, supporting all the things that I have going on. Please continue to do so. I very much appreciate it. Like I said, download the Car Jomez podcast wherever you get your podcast. Follow along on social media at Car Jomez or follow me specifically at The Joe Shoes. That way you can follow and be along for everything I do. Other than that, thank you very, very much for coming tonight. And let's do this again sometime because I've got plenty of milk still left. And I guess I will let it slip out right now. This coming Thursday on this channel... My double main man, Gomez, and I have been talking about this on Car Jomez for the past couple of weeks. We will be doing the One Chip Challenge live this Thursday coming up, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. The One Chip Challenge, both Gomez and I will be trying it out. And I've been told I need to coat my stomach and wear gloves because I can't be getting this spicy dust everywhere on me in places that it's not supposed to be so come along for that i hope you guys will check that out and keep supporting everything else other than that have a great night thank you very much until next time